No matter what happens, don't stop. We almost got it. Two treasure seekers are digging frozen ground in a cornfield at night. It's raining hard, lightning is flashing, but these two guys keep working. And now the shovel hits something solid. No way, a treasure chest. They start digging faster and find a piece of a ship's engine. What the? Far from the seas and lakes, somewhere under the fields of Kansas City, they found a giant sunken ship. How is this possible? Now you'll see. Some people spend their lives searching for shipwrecks with treasures underground. One of them is explorer David Hawley. He's been looking for such ships far from the seas, rivers, and oceans for many years. He does this because he likes the feeling of adventure. The holds of these ships may contain chests of gold, antiques, and artifacts. And you can get a lot of money for them. David says you don't have to go into the ocean to find a sunken ship. They may be lying in your backyard. But why do ships end up buried underground among fields, farms, and plains? Let's find out using the example of Steamboat Great White Arabia. According to old records, the newspaper clippings, this ship had been carrying about 200 tons of treasure before it sank in 1856. Many rumors and local legends said the ship was lying underground a few miles northeast of Kansas City. It was there because people deliberately altered the riverbed and channels of the Missouri River in the second half of the 19th century. They artificially brought the shores closer to each other. They narrowed the river to increase the flow's speed so boats could sail much faster. In the 19th century, steamboats were the most popular means of transporting passengers and goods. Before railroads, they extended the western border across the Mississippi and Missouri rivers and brought supplies to people. That's why it was so important to increase the speed of their movement. So, on September 5th, 1856, Arabia was sailing along such an estuary. It came across a snag sticking out of the water. A piece of log quickly flooded the ship. Fortunately, all passengers were evacuated. But the steamer and its precious cargo reached the silt bottom of the Missouri River in a few minutes. Several years had passed. Everyone forgot about the vessel. During this time, the course of the Missouri River had changed. But Arabia remained under the wet, muddy bottom. The soil level above it was getting higher and the ground was losing moisture. Eventually, many decades later, a cornfield formed above the sunken ship. In the 1980s, one farmer owned this area and he had no idea what was hidden in his territory. David Hawley carefully studied the history of the sunken ships of the USA. He knew that hundreds of steamers had gone underwater all over Missouri, but most of all, he was interested in Arabia, as there were rumors that it was filled with gold and other valuable things. The territory of cornfields in Kansas was vast, but David Hawley knew how to search properly. In 1987, he started working. First, together with his brother and father, they collected all the clippings from old newspapers they could find. They were looking not only for information about the steamer, but also for maps of the Missouri River. They tracked its historical changes, checked the dates, and identified a large area where the steamer sank. Next, they used electromagnetic testing and other geological stuff to study the soil and find the right place. They searched for differences in ground moisture and density. Then, they went through the territory with powerful metal detectors. And so, by the fall of 1988, they had determined the location of the steamer. Arabia was the size of a football field. This gigantic vessel lay 45 feet underground, four stories down. But before they started excavating, they had to ask the owner of the cornfield for permission. For the farmer, this news was a big surprise. He agreed on the condition that the excavations would be completed by spring so that he could sow a new crop. Digging a giant ship in winter is much more difficult and expensive than at other times. It includes additional equipment, electricity, and heating costs. The team worked day and night. They financed the excavations out of their own pocket. Each invested more than $10,000 and took out a bank loan. Finally, they noticed the first details of the ship. The shovels hit the huge engine boilers and the deck. The goal had been achieved. Most of the cargo lying inside the sunken ships is covered with rust, shells, mud, and is badly damaged. The contents of Arabia were in excellent condition, considering that the ship had sunk 130 years prior. 
Unfortunately, they didn't find the chests of gold. Still, they got several tons of other valuable cargo, household items of people who lived in the middle of the 19th century. It was a time capsule. The ship was carrying supplies for hundreds and thousands of people, and all these things were perfectly preserved. For example, they could clearly see the brand stamp Goodyear Rubber Company on one rubber shoe. The longer the excavations continued, the more things David and his team found. In the barrels, they found plates from the 19th century. They were intact and usable. Also, there were clean clothes, thousands of pairs of shoes, harpoons, frying pans, and umbrellas. The ship was carrying cargo to supply about 16 small towns. Yes, it's not gold, but such artifacts are also precious. The contents of the ship could be worth millions. However, the crew wasn't going to sell these things. They made a museum on the site of a former fruit market in Kansas City. If you go there, you will immediately feel like you're in a department store of the 19th century. There are thousands of items in good condition. Even the matches here are dry enough to light up. It took David many years to present the entire collection from the steamship. He values each of the items and doesn't want to sell them. Anyone can come here, pay for a ticket, and find themselves in the past. Who knows, maybe there's an old ship hidden in your backyard too. Geologists found an older vessel in the hot desert of Namibia in 2008. This ship sailed back in the days when pirates scared sailors on the seas, and now it's inside a dried up lagoon. The ship sailed from Lisbon in 1533 and disappeared with the crew near a small diamond mining town. After almost 500 years, the hull had been badly damaged. Only the carcass of the ship remained, but the treasure hidden inside the vessel stayed intact. They carefully studied the boat for a long time, trying not to ruin anything. And then, five days later, they found a big old chest in the hold. Carefully opening it, they found gold coins there. Thus, the cost of the ship was estimated at about $10 million. The exact cause of the shipwreck is unknown, but experts believe the ship was destroyed by heavy cargo and bad weather. It went to the bottom of a lagoon that later became a desert. Some find an airplane in their backyard, others discover a ship, and one man found a passage to an ancient secret city in his house. This happened in Turkey in 1963. The owners of the building decided to make repairs. He went to his basement and knocked down the wall and turned this place into a living room. And so, behind one wall, he found a tunnel leading underground. The man thought it was some kind of a secret chamber. He went down there and realized it was something much more than that. It was an ancient city 18 floors deep. People built it in the years 780 to 1180 as a refuge from weather disasters and the invasion of enemies. This place also includes many underground tunnels that stretch for several miles in different directions. People could get to the town from different points using secret passages leading to these roads. The city can accommodate about 20,000 residents, livestock, and tons of food supplies. Archaeologists have also found a chapel, schools, stables, and public kitchens there. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.